Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. We're here at the MSI booth at Computex 2024 to check out a range of their latest monitors. This is a big QD OLED show for MSI. So we're gonna be going through some new lower refresh rate and cheaper QD OLED monitors, which is hopefully gonna bring OLED down to a much lower price point, more accessible for gamers. We've also got this weird new AI monitor. Don't know what that's about. We'll go check it out in just a moment. Some new, I think there's some professional monitors actually increasing the refresh rate, which I'm keen to see. And there's another dual mode monitor. It's not an OLED this time, it's an LCD, but I also wanna see exactly how that monitor works. So let's get into it, but before we do. The Harbour Unbox Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI and Thermal Grizzly. Check out MSI's range of Z790 Max motherboards built for performance with robust VRM designs that are cooled with massive heat sinks. There's more than enough power delivery to fully support the latest 14th, 13th and 12th gen core series processors from Intel. Also enjoy ultra fast networking with up to 5.8 gigabits per second Wi-Fi 7 and support for PCIe 5.0 along with MSI's screwless M.2 Shield Froza for quick and easy installation of storage. And when it comes to the I.O., the Mac series is stacked. Learn more about MSI's new Z790 Mac series motherboards via the links in the video description. Also supporting our Computex trip is Thermal Grizzly and their new Cryo Sheet, a high performance graphene thermal pad that contains no liquid and therefore isn't subject to the kind of degradation seen with traditional thermal pastes, such as drying out for example. It offers outstanding thermal connectivity, simple installation and extreme longevity. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. So we're here with the MAG271 QPX QD OLED E2. So this is a new version of the 271 QPX that drops the refresh rate from 360 hertz down to just 240 hertz. The idea here is that it's going to be a little cheaper. So if you're interested in getting a 1440p QD OLED gaming monitor, you're not really that sort of competitive gamer that needs the super high refresh rate offered at 360 hertz. This is basically just a 240 hertz panel version that will come in. I haven't got a final pricing for this monitor just yet, but the expectation is it'll be around 50 to $100 US cheaper than the current 360 hertz versions. So otherwise, it looks pretty much identical to the existing 271 QPX variant in terms of its design and other features. Obviously, we know a lot about QD OLED monitors and what they bring, so you know HDR performance, response times, all those things are gonna be exactly the same on the new E2 model just will be a little cheaper, a little lower refresh rate. And personally, I think that's gonna be a really good option for people who, yeah, don't need the 360 hertz refresh rate. Should be more competitive with some of the W OLED monitors that we've seen lately. A lot of those are 240 hertz as well and bring that price point a little bit lower. And as we've seen recently from, I believe it was an ASUS model that we looked at, can be quite a compelling option. So this should be a, basically a direct competitor to that product. So very keen to check this out and see how it performs but I am expecting it to be very similar to the model that we've already tested. So yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so we're here with another one of MSI's interesting new monitors that they've got, the MAG321UP. And there's actually quite a lot to go over with their 32 inch 4K QD OLED range. So the monitor that I first reviewed and I'm currently using as my workstation monitor, the burn-in test, you might have seen all of that. That's the MPG. 321URX. The model down from that is the MPG321UPX. That's the version that's been talked about a lot in terms of not having USB ports, not having the KVM switch, and not having support for firmware updates. But what I've actually learned today at Computex is that MSI have figured out a way to provide firmware updates to the version of this 4K QD OLED monitor that doesn't have USB ports. So I'm actually not quite sure how this system is supposed to work. It's not gonna be a situation where you plug in a USB port to your PC and update it that way, whether they do it over display port or some version, I'm not 100% sure. We have seen firmware updates done over display port before, but with this particular monitor, it's not this version here, but the version without USB ports, again, you'll be able to get firmware updates for that. Additionally though, MSI tell me that only some variants of the MPG 321 UPX will support firmware updates. The very first batch that was released, I don't know, a couple of months ago now, the very first batch unfortunately does not have the chip inside that will support firmware updates. So for those owners who bought the very first batch, MSI tells me you having issues with firmware, you wanna run an update, you will be able to send it back to MSI and they'll replace it with a newer version. But for people who have bought the second batch of that monitor, again, this is very confusing because of how many monitors we're talking about, but the second batch of that monitor, that has the chip inside where you'll be able to run firmware updates over 
some sort of functionality. I'm assuming it's DisplayPort. So that's a really key advantage for people because when I was talking about those monitors originally, I think you save about $50 US compared to the top tier model to sacrifice those USB ports and firmware updates. But I find firmware updates so useful that I feel like in most cases you should be upgrading and spending the extra $50. But now that MSI has figured out a way to provide firmware updates to the cheaper model owners, it really makes the cheaper model a much more viable option in the market. So that's a really good feature that I'm hopefully we'll be seeing very, very soon. And to be clear as well, those new monitors, the new versions of those monitors, the second wave, those are already in the market today. So what I've been told is that the majority of people who have bought that monitor should be able to access firmware update support in the future. So that's really key. What else we're seeing here with the MAG 321 UP, the actual new product that we're seeing at Computex, this is a lower refresh rate version of the 4K QD OLED panel that we've seen previously. So the original models, those were 240 hertz, obviously a really great refresh rate, but if you do want to save money, you'll be able to now get a 165 hertz version using a variant of the very same panel. So we're still expecting the same performance characteristics, the same sort of HDR functionality, response times, all that sort of good stuff that we've loved from QD OLEDs, but just at a lower refresh rate. So again, I don't have final MSRP pricing for this product, but MSI's indicated that the pricing should be, again, 50 to $100 US less than what we've seen with the previous models. So probably around that, I know it was $950 for the full version, the one without USB ports, $900. So I'd be expecting a little bit lower than that to get the 165 hertz version. The reason you'd probably go with something like this, again, is if you're not too concerned about refresh rate, you're not interested in using it as sort of for competitive gaming and those sorts of things, for single player titles, 165 hertz is gonna be perfectly sufficient and you'll get all the benefits of the QD OLED panel and HDR functionality. Now, I haven't seen other manufacturers yet use a lower refresh rate version, so maybe this is some sort of MSI exclusive and they've worked with Samsung to get this version of the panel but this should be coming out very soon in the next couple of months and should, as I said, provide a new lower cost option for people that are interested in OLED panels but don't want to pay the current existing prices. So yeah, MSI has probably got the most comprehensive suite of 4K QD OLED monitors that we've seen so far across the three different versions. So yeah, hitting all those different price points, I think it's a really good move to provide options for consumers. I'm super keen to check out this when, it's, when MSI sends one for us to review in the next couple of months. So another cool monitor that I found here at the MSI booth at Computex is the MPG 321 CUPF. Not super familiar with the names yet, so I do kind of have to read them off the placards here. But this is the second dual mode monitor that I've ever seen. The first one being the LG W OLED panels that can switch between 4K 240Hz and 1080p 480Hz. This is an LCD version of that using a curved VA panel. So as you might be able to see from the sign here, MSI is calling this the world's first curved dual mode gaming monitor, which as far as I'm aware is the case. So basically what this model does is 4K at 160Hz and then with a flick of the button, you'll be able to turn it into a 1080p 320Hz monitor. So like we saw with the LG W OLED models, you'd be playing your single player titles at 160 hertz at 4K, so getting you the nice crisp visuals, the native resolution of the panel. But if you want to play eSports games, you'll be able to turn it into 1080p, get 360 hertz, nice fluid motion clarity, and really improve the experience, which makes the monitor a lot more versatile for all sorts of different types of gaming. What I'm interested to see with this VA panel is of course whether the response times are gonna be up to scratch for gaming at 320 hertz. Hopefully that'll be the case. I expect it'll be pretty fine for 160 hertz depending on the tuning. Again, VAs, we'll have to wait and see there as to what, what the eventual performance will be. But yeah, really keen to see how this goes. I feel like for a lot of 4K monitors, this could be the way to go for, until we can get to like 320 hertz natively at 4K, which is pretty high performance, but yeah, highly versatile. Also, as you might be able to see on this little placard here, you'll be able to use this in either the 32 inch full screen version or 27 inch or 24 inch sizes, which just, you know, provide black bezels around the edges. And that will be available as well in the eSports mode. So if you don't want the huge expansive 32 inch panel size, you'll be able to shrink that down to 24 inch. And I don't know, it's a bit more nice for competitive gamers. At least that's what I understand. I'm not a competitive gamer, but competitive gamers tell me that they like 24 inch monitors, which I don't know what I feel about that, but they say it's easy to view enemies or something. So what else is there to say really about this one? It's got a, a 1500R curvature, 
So that's pretty typical for V8 LCDs that we've seen before. And yeah, they're quoting 0.5 millisecond greater gray response times. We'll see how that goes. So yeah, very interesting monitor that will hopefully be quite a competitive option for people that want something versatile and 4K. So we're here with a pretty interesting gaming monitor from MSI. Not really sure what to make of it. It's the MEG321 URX. So this is another version of their 32 inch 4K QD OLED gaming monitor. We've already tested the MPG versions, there's the MAG versions as well. But this is what they're claiming to be the world's first true AI gaming monitor. So with a lot of MSI's previous AI features, they've been more software based. With the 321 URX, the MEG version, again, very confusing naming, there's actually an AI hardware processor inside this monitor. So when you plug in the display port from your PC, it first goes into an AI processor, then it goes around back in into the rest of the monitor's hardware. And what they're saying this allows you to do is, well, the monitor will start scanning the screen and reading some of the information on here and providing you either light bar updates in terms of health and things like that, or potentially highlighting enemies on the screen. So one of the obvious things that I have concerns around when it comes to AI in this sort of way, scanning the screen, highlighting enemies, maybe you know being able to see enemies through fog and those sorts of things is cheating. So MSI tells me that for when they originally demoed this monitor at CES, they got a lot of feedback that, hey, you probably should enable the AI features in competitive games. So they tell me they've listened to that feedback and it will only be enabled on a per game basis. So with this game that's being demoed here, I believe this is Monster Hunter from Capcom. They've worked with the game developers to enable the AI features and that will be the way moving forward for this AI tool. So you won't just be able to go into Counter-Strike and immediately see enemies and other things through the AI features because obviously that's not great for competitive gaming and probably shouldn't be a thing. But even then, I still don't really know what to feel about single player cheating. Like it's not really cheating in a single player game, right? Because it doesn't really matter in a competitive sense. But being able to scan and see enemies and improve your gameplay in that way, I'll have to wait and see how I feel about that when I test it. But MSI tells me that this monitor will be coming. It is their flagship tier of the 4K QD OLED monitor. And if you don't want the AI features, obviously you can just get either one of the lower tier monitors or just enjoy the other features that are available, all the usual HDR stuff, the response time stuff, uh, you know, the spectrum bar, which they've added to this version and all that sort of thing. So this is really a product that I feel I'll need to have some significant hands-on time with to get the best experience of what AI can bring in this field. And even if this is true AI, is it screen recognition? Is it actual AI? Is machine learning happening? We'll have to dive into all of those things when MSI sends out a review unit. But at least for now, with a lot of these AI things, it's, it has some promise. We'll just have to see where it goes. Another monitor I'm keen for is the MPG 341 CQPX. This is a newer version of their 1440p class ultra wide QD OLED. A lot of the previous versions of this would have been 175 hertz. There's a newer version of this panel that Samsung has enabled that pushes that refresh rate up to 240 hertz. So it's an iterative version of what we've seen before. So obviously all the same QD OLED specifications. Feels like I've talked a lot about QD OLED in this video and that's because MSI's main focus across their entire monitor lineup these days are QD OLED monitors. But this is a good iteration. It takes a product that already, we know these 1440p ultra wide panels are pretty good already, bump it up to 240 hertz. It makes it competitive with the W OLED monitors that we've seen from other brands. So. Yeah, that's gonna be a potential monitor to look out for. Another thing that I really prefer about the QD OLED versions is that they only use an 1800R curve. What we saw from the 240Hz W OLED monitors was that I think it was 800R, which is very aggressively curved. And I just thought, it's not for me really, maybe it's because I'm used to 1800R, but I definitely prefer 1800R. So with the QD OLED models, they're still sticking to 1800R. And we'll have to see, there's been some talk lately of whether or not these panels have been upgraded to the third gen sub-pixel design. Not 100% sure whether this monitor has been upgraded. I've seen some mixed thoughts on whether that's happened or not. So I'll get a microscope out later and check this out really in detail. But yeah, the main benefit here, obviously 240 Hz refresh rate, new version, new design. I think it looks better than the original model. So yeah, we'll check that one out as well when uh, MSI sends over a review unit. All right, so I was walking around the MSI booth and I spotted some additional monitors here from their professional series that caught my eye. I've been big 
on making sure that productivity monitors are no longer low refresh rate. No 60 hertz, no 75 hertz. I can't stand that when I'm personally using productivity monitors, which is why I tend to use gaming monitors. So MSI seems like they've listened to this feedback and they've upgraded two of their productivity monitors from 75 hertz to 120 hertz. So we've got the, I'm just gonna read directly off the card, the Pro MP271 AP E2, and over there, the 24 inch version, the Pro MP252 E2. So they're both 1080p monitors, 27 inch in size, 24 inch in size. But yeah, the key advantage here really is the increased refresh rate and also quite like this thin bezel design that we're seeing around all, well, at least three of the edges. It's pretty small at the bottom as well. And MSI was telling me earlier that they've put in a, uh, a phone slot here that you can slot a phone into, but this phone, it's pretty thin. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in whether it fits my thick boy which is, I've got a, uh, what is it, a Samsung Galaxy Fold. It fits, it fits. So that's nice. So the Pro Series monitors, I'm keen, not so much about the, the phone slot, that's a neat, neat little advantage, but the additional refresh rate, I'm hoping we see that across every professional monitor that's released from now until the end of time. 120 hertz should be the minimum and MSI delivering that here. All right, and that does it for our look at MSI's monitors at Computex 2024. Pretty interesting to see a lot of iterations on monitors that we've already had, but I think most of the iterations are good iterations. They bring things that we'd, I really want to see, cheaper monitors, new refresh rate options, some interesting things, the AI thing, Again, I kind of have to test that to see where that's going. Not sure about that one. But yeah, really interested to check out MSI's monitors throughout the rest of this year. Also, if you want to support the channel, Discord, uh, to get access to our Discord, actually. We've got Patreon, Floatplane. Check those out. Links in the description below. And yeah, that'll do it for this one. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.